Today, Israel invaded Gaza. They have been warning about this all along. Everybody anticipated it, and it finally happened. But to me, it's a pretty sad day uh, for the whole world because it just means that uh, the whole idea of preemptive, preventative war is spreading. Uh, Israel says they have to go in and uh, to prevent a problem that might come, and, and who knows for what re other reasons. But you know, the position that we should hold is that we should be on neither side. This is a conflict that's been going on for not decades, but hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. The people there have been fighting but we're right in the middle of it. And uh, even though Israel did the invading of Gaza, we, the United States, will be blamed for it. And there's some truth to this because Israel depends on us. They depend on us economically. They depend on us for their military power and all their weapons. And they really got a green light from our administration. We have not said one word about the plan to go in. The plans has been there for a couple weeks and everybody knew it was going to happen. So we are participating which it just means that we have just uh, antagonized uh, the Muslim Arab world even more so than ever before and uh, unfortunately it will we'll suffer the consequences from this but there is no benefit for us to be involved in, in this fight over there uh, this this thing is an entire mess uh, pa the Palestinians are virtually in like a concentration camp they have a few small missiles but it's so minor compared to the firepower of Israel who has nuclear weapons and uh, they can turn off all the food and all the water and, and whatever they want to the people in Palestine and yet we are going to have to accept some of the moral responsibility for this now one thing I'm concerned about is the uh, uh, our government now is starting to say well you know quite possibly the Iranians had something to do with this to egg on Hamas yeah it could be it might be the case but uh, this whole idea that we shouldn't have foreign powers involved, when you think of us being involved in Israel, is sort of an academic issue uh, right now. But uh, this, this to me, is something that is going to spread. It's very, very serious. And uh, the Middle East is a powder keg. And uh, unfortunately, uh, nobody sees an easy, easy way out of the Middle East crisis that is ongoing right now. And it contributes to instability around the world. It contributes to the instability of our economic situation in this country today. We're involved in wars in Afghanistan. We're escalating the war there. We're pretending the war is over in Iraq, which it is not. And uh, it's, it's draining us. It's draining us emotionally, and certainly it's draining us financially. And uh, as this whole area blows up, where, where are we even going to get the funds to, uh, to keep this uh, militarism going? And uh, yet, uh, nobody in Washington is really considering cutting back. Nobody's considering cutting back on the world empire. Everybody's frantic about the deficit. The deficit's total out of, totally out of control. It's anticipated that this fiscal year, the deficit, uh, the national debt could increase by $2 trillion. Sure, they're still buying treasury bills, but how long is that going to happen? That is going to come to an end. I think that's going to be the big news this year, is people are going to be less enthusiastic about buying American debt. And uh, uh, this commitment overseas as well as the commitment here at home to be all, everybody that gets in line uh, it, it just can't continue yet we're getting ready to start a new session high on the agenda right now is another bailout package between 750 to 1 trillion dollars there's no money in the bank and it's just going to come out of printing more money and hopefully borrowing money more money from others but other countries are going to get reluctant and I see that this year most likely the big event will be the further and maybe rapid deterioration of the dollar, which means that we're going to have a lot of inflation. People say that the only concern we have now is deflation, but I see the concern about inflation. Inflation will come. There's, there's still plenty of it around, and you can't, con can, you can't create trillions of dollars of new money endlessly to bail out everybody and to police the world without it coming home to roost and really damaging our whole financial system. Everybody's frantic about what's happening and they don't like it, but everybody is
is asking for the same thing that caused the problem. We were spending too much money, we were borrowing too much money, we had too much debt, and now we have a crisis. There's a deflationary uh, move on right now that the market is demanding, and yet what are we doing? We're spending more money, running up more debt, borrowing more money, and printing more money. You can't solve the problems that way. So the combination of the world crisis going on with this escalation going on in the Middle East, with our escalation deliberately in Afghanistan, and with the pretense that the war has ended in Iran, means that we're in for big trouble. We're in for big trouble uh, on the world stage, as well as we're in big trouble here financially at home. So though everybody is hopeful, and I would like to be hopeful with a new administration, a new Congress, and we wanted to change, uh, change leadership, uh, quite frankly, there's been no change in the philosophy of the leadership. The two parties, unfortunately, have both endorsed militarism abroad, the empire abroad, uh, uh, the uh, idea of inflation with the monetary system, deficit financing, the welfare state. Both, both parties have endorsed this. The last administration endorsed it. This administration endorses it. So the victims will be the innocent American people. And the real tragedy, it will be an attack on our personal liberties. Because as governments get bigger, the economy founders, and there's more chaos, what happens is government gets bigger, they get more authoritarian at the expense of the liberties of each and every individual. So it is a time in, in our history that all of us ought to pay close attention and do whatever we can to alert the people, to educate the people, and do what we can to preserve those principles that were embedded in our Constitution.